the title of today's topic is electron.net with asp.net server side blazor and ef so we start off by asking the question what is electron there are a lot of products that we use on a daily basis and they were built on this electron framework the one that i use regularly is vs code you know that ide that most of us are familiar with. It is built using the Electron technology, and that is why it is cross-platform. So Electron is a framework for creating native applications with web technologies like JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. It takes care of the hard part so you can focus on the core of your application. This was taken from the website www.electronjs.org. We'll visit that site in a moment, but the idea is you can use web technologies to build a desktop app and that desktop app would be cross-platform and the whole project is open source. So where we're going with this is we're going to build a web application and we'll turn it into a desktop application. Now, one way of doing that is using Electron. There are other ways of doing that. For example, there's progressive web apps. That's another solution, but I'm going to talk about Electron today. So you can go to the Electron site. So this is the Electron site. And over here, you can see that these apps were created using Electron, Visual Studio Code, WhatsApp, Twitch, Slack, and so on and so forth, okay? If you want to develop using Electron, you have to work with JavaScript. Now, there is an open source project that is called Electron.net. And what Electron.net is, it's a wrapper around Electron, allowing you to embed ASP.NET core apps. And that basically means that you can use C Sharp for building your application. There are command line interface extensions that facilitate building and launching apps for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux platforms. So you build this one app as a web app, you can transform it into an Electron app and deploy it on all the three platforms. The prerequisites for doing that is on your computer, you must have Node because behind the scenes, it takes your c -sharp code and converts it into Node. And ultimately it is the Node app that becomes your desktop app. And you must have at least .NET Core 3.1 or later. Now today, I'll be using .NET 5.0. So it works perfectly well with 5.0. This is the open source GitHub site. This was started by a guy called Gregor Biswanger. And I read up on him. He lives in Germany, in Nuremberg. And he's also a Microsoft MVP. And he also created a video, how to contribute to Electron.NET project. It's a YouTube video. And if you watch this video, he will show you what you need to do if you want to contribute to the project, the agenda today, we're going to build an ASP.NET server-side Blazor app and electronize it. I didn't invent this word, electronize, because you see later on that it is the command line interface. There's something called electronize. And then we're going to add database and entity framework functionality to the application. And then we'll add message boxes because if you're interacting with the desktop, it's not enough just to build a web app. You might want to have message boxes. You might have a file save as, and I'm going to show you how you can add a menu system to it. How can you uh, add a message box and so on and so forth. And I'll also show you how we can add save as functionality really for the desktop. Finally, I will create installable setup.exe files that will enable you to install this in your operating system in Windows and uninstall it if you don't want it. You can create these install packages for Linux and Mac OS. So this is the architecture of what we're going to be doing. It's very simple. I mean, there's nothing special here. I'm going to build a server-side Blazor app and get it to talk to a SQL Server database running in a Docker container, and it's going to use Entity Framework 5.0. You may want to have a different use case. Instead of talking to a database, you may get your ASP.NET app to talk to an API service or some other system, ERP system or whatever. It's, it's really left up to you. The sky is the limit when I think about what's possible here. But just to show you one use case that you can talk to a database, I'm giving it to you as an example. And eventually, we're going to have two apps. This would be a web app, and we're going to convert this web app 
into a desktop app because this thing really is a desktop app here. So it's the same app. You can run it as a desktop app if you convert it into Electron, or if you don't convert it, you can just run it as a web app. So this is what we're going to be doing. So just to get started, I'll show you what I have. What I have is I have a Docker container here and it's running the SQL Server Northwind database. So it's running in a container and I can just show you using Azure Data Studio, which also is an Electron app. Azure Data Studio is built using the VS Code shell. So I'm going to show you that I can talk to the database. And today I'm going to be using these two tables, the categories and the products table. And there is a one-to-many relationship between categories and products. So one category has more than one product. Let's get started. I'm going to create a Blazor app. I'll come into a command prompt here and create a Blazor app. So the first thing is I'm going to make a directory called Electron Server Blazor EF. Okay. Then I'm going to go into that directory and then I will create a Blazor server app, which is using this command here, which most of you will know. And I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of Blazor. In order to use Electron, you have to install a tool, a .NET tool. And this is the command for installing a .NET tool install minus G, which is global. And this is the Electron Net CLI tool. So I'm going to install this, but since I already have it, it's saying to me it's installed already. Another tool that we will need is the .NET EF tool which I guess most of you have, and I already have that. So if I run it, it will say you already have that. Now that I have my app created here, let me just run it. So I'll go .NET run, and it will just run a server-side Blazor app, nothing new, but we're going to electronize it, turn it into an Electron app. So now if I go to localhost 5001, you'll just see a, a basic Blazor server-side app. So this is our Blazor app nothing special. So I'll just close this, stop the server. And I want now to add a bunch of packages to my application. And I'm just going to show you what are the packages. I will add these packages. These first three packages is just so that our application has SQL Server capabilities. This is the important package that we need to add so that we can use Electron.net. So I'm going to take all of these packages and add them to my project. And of course, behind the scenes, I've got Node in installed on my computer. So node is a prerequisite. Now let's go into VS Code and do what's necessary to electronize this application. I'm in VS Code. The first thing you need to do to electronize this application is go to the program.cs and in here we're going to add some code right here. So let me tab this in. We need to use Electron. So here you're saying, okay, pass any arguments that are being added here and pass it to this use electron method. And if you're working in the development environment, you might want to set the environment variable for electron to be development. Okay, so we have to resolve this. That's all you need to do in your program.cs file. So let me close this. The next thing is some code in the startup.cs. In the startup.cs, we need to add a method here that bootstraps Electron to your application. So again, let us resolve these and this one as well. These are all Electron namespaces. So what we're doing here is we're creating an Electron window, giving it a specific height and width, and then we're clearing some cache in Electron itself. And basically here, we're going to show a window. This is a desktop window that you're going to show. Okay. Now we need to call this method from someplace. So we're going to come here in the configure method and let's call this method here. So what this is saying is if this app is running in electron mode, then call this electron bootstrap method. Otherwise don't. And this basically means that your application, even though you made it work as an Electron desktop app, you can also run it as a web app. So you can run it in both modes. So this is it. All we need to do is these, you know, some code in the program.cs, some code in the startup.cs, and you pretty much have electronized. It. The first step is you call one of the CLI commands, electronize in it. And this creates this Electron manifest file, okay? And then the next thing is electronize Start. This one, the first time you do it, it takes a bit of time because it is creating behind the scenes some node infrastructure. 
It's done, by the way, here it is. This is not a browser application. This is a desktop application. You see, these are the desktop menus. And so we've electronized our web application and the rest works just like before, okay? So why don't we enhance this and add a few bells and whistles just to see how far you can take this thing. I'm going to close this and the best way to close it is to say file exit here. So the next step is let us add some database functionality. So I'm going to run this code here. This code uses the .NET EF tool or utility and it reverse engineers two tables, the products table and the categories table from the Northwind database that's running in a container. This thing is running in a container and I got it to listen on 1444. Okay, so if I take this, I can copy it and run it here. And it should reverse engineer for me these particular tables and it will put the output in a folder called NW, which we will see in a minute. So now at this point, we have these two tables, the category table, the products table that have been reverse engineered here. And I have here the context class. Now this context class, it's not a good idea to have the connection string embedded in your source code. So I'm going to delete this because this is a bad idea. Okay. Instead, we're going to put the connection string in the app settings.json. I'm going to come here and in my app settings.json, I'll add the connection string, it's the same connection string. Okay. Now, because we are using this connection string, of course, if any of you have been working with ASP.NET Core, you have to add some code here in the configure services method right here, associate this connection string with this context class and to make this context class a singleton class so that it is accessible through dependency injection in other classes. I need to resolve this and I need to resolve something here. So now I think I can continue extending this. If you have worked with Blazor server side, you will know that in the data folder, you have your services. Like here, there is this weather forecast service. So I'm going to follow the same approach and I'm going to create a new class here that I will call my Northwind service and it will be responsible for the interaction between the application and the database. In a sense, it could be like a middle tier. I'll create a new class here and I'll call it Northwind service. And I will add some code into this Northwind service. And this code is very simple code. Let me resolve these namespaces. Okay. So what are we doing here? We have the, this is the constructor. So we're using dependency injection in the constructor to make available an instance of this context, Northwind context. One more thing we need to resolve here. And I have only one method here, okay? This one method is just going to go against the database. It's going to go against the pro products table. And I want to determine from this link statement here, I want to get a list of categories and how many products belong to that category. So this is like group by statement and it's going to get me the categories by product count, like how many products are every, in every category and it returns the results. So there is nothing special about this. This is a very simple query. Now with these services, you need to make them available through dependency injection for the rest of your application. And you do that by coming into this configure services and adding, I wouldn't say singleton because I'm not using a singleton. What I'm doing here is I'm adding this service scoped. I'm saying add scoped, not add singleton, add scoped. And this means that it creates a separate instance for every user. So this makes the service available across the entire application. Okay, so now let's create our user interface. So to create a user interface, if you've worked with Blazor, you have to come into this pages folder and create a razor page. One way is simply copy one of these razor pages. I, I just copied the razor, fetch data dot razor. I just copy it and I'll paste it and I'll repurpose it by renaming it. And here, let me rename it. And I'm going to rename it to report dot razor. And I have the code for this page, which I will explain to you. I'll get rid of all of this code and paste it with my own code. So here, this is going to be the route. To get at this page, you have to hit slash report. This is our route. And you can see here that I'm using dependency injection to inject the Northwind service. Now let's go down here. In this method on initialized data, 
um, calling this method on the service, get categories by product async, which is the method I showed you before. It returns data, which is a list of objects. Now the code here is very simple. This is the heading part of your table, and this is the body part of your table. You're iterating through this collection data, and for every item, you're displaying the name and the count. Now this is using this syntax because I'm returning in my service, I'm returning a list of object. So the next thing I want to do is to add this page this report razor, I want to add a link to this page in my menu system. And in Blazor, the menu system is under shared nav menu. And here's our menu system. I want to add a list item here. So I will add one just so that we can access this thing from the menu system. Here we go. So we have this link. It's going to go to report when the user clicks on this report menu item. That's it. I did what I wanted to do. So I can try now to do electronized start. Let's see if this works. If we can get our report. Notice here, you see NPM installed. This is calling NPM, which is node. And it started on my other screen. And here we go. If I click on report, there it is. It got me the data. So this is a server-side Blazor app. Let's do something else here. Just so that I can show you that you can, if you want, change the menu system at the top here. Because notice the menu system at the top, it's got file, edit, view, window, and help. These are the default menu items. I want to change this. I want to create my own. So you can change that if you want to. So to do that, I'm going to stop this exit out of here. And maybe I'm here and create a folder called models, for example. I'll say a new folder. Let me call it models. And in this models folder, I'm going to create a new class, which I'll just call it, it's a helper class. And in this helper class, I will add my menu system. And by the way, I'm going to take some boilerplate code, which I copied from the electron.net site. And it's boilerplate code for creating a menu. So let me resolve all of these things here. And then I'll explain to you the code. It goes away. This is electron. I think I've resolved all of these. Somehow, they're not formatted properly. I'll do my best to format it because even the default format of VS Code doesn't seem to fix this. Sometimes it doesn't do it the way you want it done. Here, okay. So what have we got here? Here, you can query the, the operating system to determine whether this is running under Mac because Mac has some different rules as far as the APIs are concerned. So you want to cater to that too. So if you have a Mac, you may need to create this menu. This app menu, if you go down here, you see this app menu only be used if it is on a Mac. See, on a Mac, you want to do something like this. Anyways, this, this is where you're creating your menu item. We're going to create a file menu item and it's going to have a save as. What I want to do is to show you that I can save some data and then use some of the operating system dialogues, like the Save As dialog that is pretty much you have Electron.net that's going to actually hook into the dialog system inside of Windows to get you save dialog. Let me resolve this. So here we're going to create a menu item called Save As. It's going to open up the Electron browse Windows first. This is like it's going to create a Save As window. You can set, this is where th that Save As window is being called. You can set the options here. For example, I want to save this as a CSV file. So I'm going to set the extension to be only CSV. So once you get the result from the user, then you're going to pass this result to the Electron app. By the way, this Electron app is running with a small web server. There is an actual web server that runs by default, I think it is 8001. But it checks if your 8, 000, port 8001 is already used, it will go to 8002. If that's already used, it will go to 8003. So this particular port number, it could be dynamic. So we're going to make a request to go to localhost and whatever port number is being used, and then we'll go to a save as route and pass the result, okay? So this is the file menu that we're adding plus a quit, okay? And then file and view. So in Windows, what you're going to see is save as, and a separator, and then you'll see another menu 
file view. You're going to see this in a moment. This is the kind of menu that we're building here. Okay. So having done that, we need to create a page, a save as page. So I'm going to take this fetch data razor, copy it and paste it like we did before. And let me rename this to save as. And here I'm going to put a razor page. So let me delete what's here, paste this. So this is going to have a route save as, and you can pass the file path because the file path is going to be used here to save the data. In this method on initialize async, it's going to go to the service, get the data, iterate through the data and create a simple comma separated value file, which is the name comma count. And then it will write it out to the file system. And here it's just going to say, if everything's successful, it's going to say file successfully saved to the file path. So this is a very simple razor page, just so that we can see something happening. I'm going to close that. And now I have my menu. I need to call my menu at some point. The menu has to be called in the startup.cs and it will be in the electron bootstrap method right here. I have a helper class dot it is of this. By the way, I think I need to do something here. This is private. I should make it public. Public and let me make it static because it cannot find it. Go back to startup. Hopefully now it will find it. Hold create menu. I'll just stick it in because it must find it. So let's resolve this. There we go. Finding it. I have to call that menu system and plug it in here. Now I discovered I had some problems getting this to work. And that is because in the route, we're going to pass the name of a file and the name of a file has a dot and that was breaking the application. And I discovered that to solve that problem, so it doesn't break, I need to add an endpoint in my ASP.NET application. And I had to end up putting this endpoint here so that it can accommodate a dot. So I wrote here necessary when routing parameters includes a dot. You need to do this, otherwise it will break. So that's it. Let's run this. So let me go electronize start. And now let's see if we have our save as functionality here. Okay. The app has started. So I have my report here and you know, when I go save as this is an operating system dialogue. So there are many dialogues and there's a lot of documentation with electron.net where you can hook into the operating system and it takes care of the appropriate widget in the appropriate operating system to open. So let me say net BC here and say save. So what's happening is that it saved it. So let me go to D blog, D blog. And here, this is the file. If I double click on it, it should open up in Excel. And here it is. I was able to export the data. Okay. So this is a way of just showing you that you can take an ASP.NET web app and turn it into a desktop app. And I told you before that we will be getting file and view. Okay, these are the two menu items that we'll be getting. This is the, the menu item that we created. So let me exit out of here. Close this. After all what we did to the application, if I want to run it simply as a web app, I can go .NET run. And I haven't changed the, the web nature of this application. It still runs as a web app because there is logic. If you remember in the startup.cs, there was logic to distinguish whether it's running in electron mode or in web mode. So if I go here and I say HTTP colon slash slash localhost 5000, this is still running as a web app. I haven't broken it. Now, the last thing I want to show you is how can we make this installable in our operating system? I'll go back to my app. I can go into a terminal window in here and I will show you how you can target different operating systems. So I can go electronize and there's a build command build. And let me say help here. So you will see in the help that you can target these three operating systems. See, you can create a setup that you can install on your computer or distribute it, send it to a friend or whatever, and you can target these three operating systems. What I'm going to do is I'm going to target Windows because I'm on Windows now. So the command for that is, you do it here, electronize, nice, yeah, and then build slash target, and I want to target Windows. This takes a bit of a time, but eventually it creates for you the EXE 
that you can run to install this into your add remove programs in Windows. If you target Mac, it will create for you, I think it is the PKG file or something like that in, in, in Mac. I don't remember what the extension is, but it will also create for you that uh, installable artifact that you can send to somebody who uses the Mac. Okay, so this takes a bit of time. It's doing a bunch of NPMs and Node and all that stuff. And ultimately it's going to create an EXE file. You can also customize the icon that's going to be used and all that. But eventually what we'll do is we're going to go to electron.net bin desktop and it is doing it right in here. In here, you're going to have a .exe file that you can install in your operating system. It takes a bit of time. So it's, it's done. Um, here you are. So this is the .exe file. If I run this, I can install the application in my operating system here, just like any Windows application. And it's a desktop application, okay? So at this point, it's been installed. And if I come here and I search for it, Electron, and then here it is, it's working. Okay. It's a desktop app. And then I'll just show you that it's in add remove programs here. If I go to add apps and features, this is my add remove programs. Let me search for electron, electron, and here it is. And I can uninstall it. Okay. And it's gone. In a moment, it will be gone.